Hello JavaScripters, Bruce here with a little example uh, that we'll be going over in class. Uh, I think you all recognize that button there. And when I load this page, notice that it's giving me the current likes from a database in the cloud. And when I click on the thumbs up, it's incrementing the likes, okay? It's not a very good like system because I wouldn't allow the same person to like twice, but I wanted to show you how this works, okay? 198, I refresh the page, it's there. If I bring up another browser and I refresh the page, you can see it's 198, 199, I go back here, and it's 199 as well, okay? So how does all this work? How does all this work? Well, I created a PHP function on uh, an Amazon server that talks to a MySQL database in the Amazon cloud. So we're not going to go over that. Uh, I will go over it in class, but I didn't want to go over it in the video. I do have some HTML here, an H1, an image, a blank div with an ID of content, and a call to jQuery, and then a script block. In the script block, I have a function called getLikes. And what getLikes is going to do is going to make a request out to the URL with the path to the put to that likes.php and it's setting the action equal to count. That's saying, hey, get me the total number of likes. And the this PHP script on the server knows exactly what to return. It's a get request and here um, I'm getting back what's called JSONP and, and we'll talk about that in class. When it's done, I want to take the content, which has nothing in it, put an H2, and get the data back, and then get the result, which contains the number of likes. Bing, bang, boom, all done. Okay. Um, down here uh, is where I have my document ready, and here is where I call the get likes function on the page load when the document is ready. And then I have another event here that says, hey, bind a click event to the like button and do the same thing here, except for action equals count, action equals like. And that will tell the server-side process that we want to like that particular thing to record a record in a database. Again, I'm making a get request. The data type is JSONP. Uh, and when the function is done, we just log some of the data out to the console, and we do the same thing we did above. We just log out the data, okay? So let me show you the PHP code because I think you'll appreciate it. So I am going to open up likes.php and I'm going to open it up with Sublime. And uh, my PHPers and my API people should know this pretty well, but I have a function called process action, which gets called when the PHP script loads. Okay, And I include a connection to the database here on line 4. I check to see if there is an action in the query, okay? That there is a query parameter set. If there is none, then I tell them to go away and the script dies, okay? If there is an action and it equals count, I then go and count the number of likes from the database and I, I build what's called an associative array in PHP and then I encode it into JSON and I slap around it a thing called callback uh, right here. So callback in the beginning and then the data and that, okay? I'll talk about that in class. If the action is like, that means we need to record a record in the database. We do insert into likes with the username of value Bruce, okay? Then if we didn't, if we were not able to successfully enter in a row, we come back with an error here, and I probably should add some error checking in my P, in my HTML JavaScript, but whatever. And then I put together the, I query the number of likes in the database again. I send back here, um, what do you call it, a uh, uh, the number of rows, and I package it up and send it back as a function with JSON in it, okay? So that's it. We'll go over this in class. I think you'll find it, you know, quite interesting because, you know, uh, you may get asked to write one of these one day. Maybe it's not a like button, but maybe it's uh, something else.